नमस्कार व्यूवर्स नमस्कार व्यूवर्स टुडे नवरात्रि स्टार्ट एंड एवरीबॉडी इज बिजी टू परफॉर्म द पूजा रिचुअल्स एंड अदर थिंग्स बट द सेम टाइम वी आर हियर एवरी सैटरडे मॉर्निंग 11 एएम विथ अ ब्यूटीफुल बेबी नार सो द टुडे इट इज आल्सो वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दैट our speaker is subhankar sen gupta ji from kolkata he is rlg from 1990 batch so more than 30 years experienced guide his educational background is from finance economics but later he joined as a regional level guide and working since last 31 years and one of the best guide from the uh, east region and as well one of the best Best IITG from all over India. So the Dada is going to show us today not a journey of the two river, but uh, the same time we can see the cruise, cruise journey in this two river, Mother Ganges and Brahmaputra. So it will be a amazing webinar. Don't miss it. Keep it in your treasure. It will. become a very famous webinar among all of the webinars which we have performed during this last one year this was the vision of uh, our adg ma'am rupender brar and uh, in her direction we are coming on every saturday by 11 am with a beautiful episode so don't miss it join us and now dada stage is yours come forward and we are eager to hear you so please come forward join your stage thank you ajay ji and uh, thank you everybody good morning and welcome to this special episode of the river the river journey everybody knows is one of the earliest journey mankind has ever taken from the beginning of our civilization river has been a part of our culture and our life it's not only about india it's about everywhere in the world however india's and its rivers have a very special place because nowhere on earth the river based civilizations survived so much in so many years and this is probably made india a very special place we are talking today about the tales of two rivers which will lead us to the search of the soul of india we are talking about the rivers ganga and and brahmaputra with the prayer to mother ganga our journey begins at the 4023 meters perennial source of the gangotri glaciers literally called gomukh and you can see just behind below the uh, picture of the gomukh another very interesting figure a lady lying on the interesting animal called makara who has the snout of a crocodile and the tail of a dolphin it is makara the carrier of mother goddess ganga whereas on the other hand in the kailas mansarovar you see on the right brahmaputra starts as it, its journey at 4558 meters and these two journeys are meant to from two different sources moving towards two different directions but the celestial 
wishes allow them or force them to meet towards the end. We are talking about this meeting of the two great rivers and the becoming of a civilization we call Bharatiya civilization, Bharatiya Sabhyata. Here, when Ganga starts his journey, it starts as five different streams. You can see from the left corner of the screen, Dhauli Ganga, which meets Alakananda River in Vishnu Prayag, Nandakini, which meets Alakananda River in Nanda Prayag, whereas Pindar River, which comes from the Pindari glaciers and meets Alakananda at Karna Prayag. These three rivers meeting Alakananda forming into a bigger river to go and meet Bhagirathi Ganga, which comes from the Gomuk and then becomes Ganga. Every time I spoke about the river, I mentioned it as Ganga. The etymologists say that the word Ganga is an aberration of the word Kyang, which means the giver of the water and water is life. So the giver of life. When it becomes Ganga at these five confluences known as Panchaprayag, this in the Indian psyche has a complete uh, spiritual significance where these five rivers actually talk about the five elements a soul must possess, which is the wisdom, the senses, the compassion, the uh, uh, devotion, and the indifference. So you have all these together to become a Ganga. As Ganga moves farther down, hills the Himalaya, you can see this shows the courses of the rivers on the left side for the Ganga, on the right side for Bhagirat, for Brahmaputra, I'm afraid. This Panchaprayag for Ganga is also there in, uh, for Brahmaputra. You can see Brahmaputra starts at Sangpo in Tibet. Then it becomes Siang as it enters into Arunachal Pradesh. And another stream becomes Po Sangpo and meets the Lohit and Buridihing. So together they form what we call Brahmaputra or in Assamese, Bura Luit. The Luit is a word meaning Lohit. Ganga, having started its journey at uh, Devaprayag, starts moving farther downstream, straight south westward and was probably to meet the river Indus or meet the Arabian Sea at the end. So that was an ordinary course should have been, but it is not because Ganga had a divine job to perform. And this divine job was to cleanse the 60,000 descendants of the King Sagara, who was turned into ashes by Sage Kapil Muni. It's a fantastic story. Every Indians probably know that when the Sagar Raj performed the Ashwamedha, his horses were stolen by Indra, the god. But he tied it at the ashram of Kapil Muni. So when Sagar Raj sent 60,000 sons to recover the horse, they found it tied at the Kapil Muni ashram and they tried to snatch the horse and Kapil Muni got angry and destroyed all the 60,000 sons of the Sagar. His descendants then tried to liberate the souls and one of the descendants, Bhagirath, successfully brought the river Ganga to the earth. And this is why Ganga is often called Bhagirathi. In Prayag, there are two big streams can be visibly seen. One is called Ganga, the other called Yamuna, which comes from the Delhi side. And another river is supposed to meet here, Saraswati, which is visibly not seen now. So it's a Tribeni Sangam where 
the three world, the sattva, tama, and raja confluences, making it one of the most sacred place on earth. And together, this takes the journey to cleanse the soul towards the downstream. From Allahabad to the place called Haldia, further at the sand head near Ganga Sagar where the sea meets at the river, this uh, huge area of about 1260 kilometer has been declared as a national waterway number one. And the journey should start from Allahabad. However, at the present conditions, the boats are not able to take you till from uh, Allahabad all the way. So the journey begins a little downward, a little south of Allahabad, a place called Chunar, closer to Varanasi. I have a few maps here to understand the route a river cruise can take. At the moment, the, all these routes which are highlighted here are operational. So the first bar, bait starts from Chunar, goes all the way up to Patna, covers a distance of about 400 kilometer in seven days time. On the way, it stops at various villages and sites to give you the option to search your journey and the meaning of your journey. The next part, which starts at Patna and takes another seven days to reach Raj Mahal or Farakka, this stretch is the second part, which goes through the state of Bihar and Jharkhand, has very little known, uh, little known places, but nonetheless very important as far as Indian civilization is concerned. So one must visit these places in a lifetime to see how India developed from a primary civilization to one of the largest civilization in the mankind. The third journey is a southward journey because in Raja Mahal, there is another fantastic story about how Ganga was approaching towards Brahmaputra and suddenly she saw Brahmaputra from a far away and got uh, a little bit afraid of the mighty Brahmaputra and therefore she wanted to get back to the matted hair of Shiva but she had to perform her duty and so she was convinced by Bhagirath to take a different course through the forests of Bengal and thus she decides to change her course and comes straight southward journey. So during this course Ganga changes three times the first part from the Himalaya to the plains of Rishikesh, it goes to a southwest direction. From the Chunar, it takes an eastward journey. And from Raj Mahal, it starts a southward journey. This is three basic points of Ganga. And if you remember these three points, you know that you understand how the Indian states, even politically, socially, economically, developed into different states at different times. After Kolkata, the journey is a very interesting part, has been recently introduced by the government of India, declaring this part, which is a light blue color on the right uh, bottom corner of the screen. It is uh, a map from Kolkata all the way to the Dhubri in Assam going through Bangladesh. So it's a downward journey, then upward journey again. It is nearly 1200 kilometer waterways and you pass through two different UNESCO World Heritage Forest of Sundarbans. And then from there, you will move upward to Assam and here you will see another different civilization. So you can reach Brahmaputra and the confluence of Brahmaputra and Ganga, you will see from this journey through Bangladesh where 
the Brahmaputra, having seen Ganga, drifted away from him, but he wanted to have uh, a confluence with the Ganga. So he changed the name and called Jamuna. Don't, to conf don't please confuse with Yamuna. It's Jamuna. I always tell people that it is easy to remember um, that in, in the Eastern Bengal dialect, the word Jamuna means I won't go. So the river Brahmaputra says to himself, I won't go to disturb you, my dear, but please come to me. And so Brahmaputra changed the name into Jamuna, meeting Tista, it finally comes close to Ganga and together they form into a different river, Padma. And this Padma river then goes straight into the sea through Bangladesh. So this entire journey will take us about 55 days if we use the uh, presently available boats and in different segments. And we can experience all different things that made the Indian civilization today. So with the blessings of a Sadhu Baba, let us start our journey. I'm taking you through a very quick pictorial journey so that our time is well utilized because 55 days in uh, 35 minutes, you have to have encapsulate. It will give you the chance to ponder yourself. And when you come on board of any of the cruise ships run by any of the uh, five different companies in the river Ganga or in Brahmaputra, will allow you to actually experience it in your own pace and your own time. So we start our journey from Chunar in Uttar Pradesh. This uh, fort, Chunar fort is one of the oldest fort called Vishnupada. And if you take a tour around here, you will know the legend of Ganga starting from the foot, uh, footsteps of Vishnu. And this is a very well known place, Varanasi, the uh, mostly visited place on earth probably mostly photographed if not, and is one of the highlights of the trip. Ghats of Varanasi has become a main point of attraction of the river journeys. However, the journey just starts from there, and now you enter into the more uh, inner country, which is otherwise not penetrable by any other means. Here, you see two monuments. One is very well kept on the left side of the screen is the monument of Lord Cornwallis who died here in Ghazipur. And on the right is the war memorial of Baksar where the fate of India decided in 1764 by these three people, Mir Kasim, Hector Munro, and Nawab Sujauddaullah. They defeated, the British East India Company defeated the accumulated force of the Nawabs and thus Emperor Shah Alam, the Mughal Emperor, had to confer the title of Diwani to the British East India Company through Robert Clive to rule over the entire Gangetic Delta. At that time it was divided as Bengal, Bihar, Orissa and Assam. So, this is the place where the history began in the early 18th century. Just way out, you are there again into the wild and you see the national bird of India, peacock. You can hear them even far in the middle of the river. At this rate, the river would be about two and a half to three kilometer wide at points, but you can still see the animals like the blue bull or the nilgai and the peacock. Then you drift farther down and meet the confluence of the Koshi River where the Sonpur Fair, cattle fair takes place in the month of November. So once you are there, you can also enjoy this cattle fair. If not, then you would just see this riverside embankment where they collect the red sand for the building purpose. It's a huge number of boats, it's a sheer sight. 
to please your eyes. Then this hectic area will take you to another place called Maned. It's a very important place for the development of Sufism in India. Uh, the place of uh, Magdum Shah Maneri with, of the Yahya sect. He started here. It's a beautiful edifice on the Chunar sandstone and then carvings are very important, but very few people actually go and visit there. And it is very well restored monument by the Archaeological Survey of India. As you go there, you further drift down to the ancient capital of Magadh, Patana or Pataliputra. Here you see many things. You have more options than what I can show you on the presentation here. The Golghar is a granary which is built to store uh, food grains. However, was never used. A fascinating story about this Golghar it's a, and its design and its purpose will take your time to realize the time of late 18th century Bengal, Bihar, Orissa. Whereas on the left, you see a beautiful Gurdwara, the birthplace of the 10th Guru, the Dasham Guru Arjun Singh, uh, sorry, Guru Gobind Singh. And it's uh, one of the most sacred place for the Sikh religion. And then you move farther down, you come to Mangir or Mungir, a deserted place, but having lovely places to see, including the most illustrious, not so well maintained, although a place at the left top corner of the screen, you see a small shrine called the Sita Kund. The Ramayana story relates to the site where Sita Mata was supposed to get her Patal Pravesh. She invited Mother Earth and the Earth divided and took her away. So this is how the Ramayana story was uh, recreated here at the hot water spring. Not many people know in the plains of the river, Basin, there can be hot spring. So this is the place in Sita Mahi in, uh, where you can see a lot of hot springs and then other structures, including the colonial structures and the fort of Mungir. It also is a house of a famous World Yoga Society. And then you go farther down to meet this very unnoticed, magnificent rock carvings right on the river. You'll wonder how can this be carved that too in the 10th century when there was no modern equipment. It was carved in an island. It's a rock sticking out of the river, carved by the people of three different religions, the Hindus, the Buddhists, and the Jains. This is a very famous place now because the temple they call Ajgaivinath. Ajgaivinath means the, the god of the miracles. So people believe the miracles do take place here. And one of the miracles is right in front of you, having a foreigners and taking a selfie with the foreigners by the locals. So this is how the people get together and uh, culture get exchanged. From a far away, the Stin Pahari, another island, there are tiny little islands on this part of the river, which will soon lead you to another area which has been earmarked as a dolphin sanctuary, the Gangetic River Dolphin, and very uh, rare species and now been protected by the government of India. And therefore you can see a lot of dolphins around this stretch on the river, besides the monuments like Vikram Shila Mahavihar, is one of the five major universities of the Pala period when this beautiful education system run throughout the country as a network of universities started with Nalanda and the last one being Mahasthangar in Bangladesh. So these five are connected together. So you can learn more about the university and its surrounding uh, places. There's a lovely museum at, at, next to it. 
Then you go to Bhagalpur. A lot of stories are told about Bhagalpur. This beautiful painting by William Hodges shows the Cleveland House on the top of the hills of Bhagalpur, which is now converted into university, and is also the place of one of the early battle for India's independence against the British Army and the British uh, colonial uh, rulers. It is Tilka Manji. We are in Jharkhand now. So Jharkhand remembers Tilka Manji with the statues and many other things. But it's not only about the monuments, about the places you visit. It's about the people you meet, about the rituals you see, through which you learn more about our country, our culture. Ganga is the sacred river. It gives you all that you need, the nourishment, the pleasance, and the comfort, and the company in all part of your life. If it's a childbirth, a marriage, or just adoration of the God, or even farther down at the time of death, and when your ancestors die, then to remember the ancestors, you come back again to the river. So the river witnesses our birth and death and the life beyond because the river continues, the flow never stays at one point. So the life continues and our journey also. Raj Mahal Hills is a fantastic uh, granite carvings can be seen on the river, right on the river as Akbar shifted his capital for a very short period of time after conquering Bengal. So the Bengal capital was shifted to Raj Mahal. It, it was the place which supplied the British East India Company with its saltpeter to make the gunpowder. So you must see some of the queries. And then you come to the mosques and the old palace and the old uh, capital of Bengal, the goal. If you feel a little bit exhausted, then there are onboard entertainments for you. You can dance with the Indian girls, Indian uh, women, and the men who perform uh, classical dance forms and then engage the guests with their beautiful performances. Or you can just take a side, a corner at some place and do your own sketch and contemplate on what you have seen. By now, most of the time, the people, especially the foreigners who come to India and take these river journeys, try to become more Indian. And you can see they're enjoying their life as with Indian attires. As you reach the old Bengal capital of Gaur, you are in the magnificent barrage and the first technological fit of free India, a barrage on the river Ganga, which actually allows the water sharing between India and Bangladesh nowadays, but it will be another day, another topic to discuss. Here, we will see that the river distributes into two and splits the left branch or the eastward branch is separated from the west. Uh, westward branch. The westward branch is named as Bhagirathi. The eastward branch is named as Padma. And Padma means the Brahmaputra. The eastward branch cannot be directly accessed now because of the barrage. And so the barrage authority has made a log gate. And it's a very interesting journey through the log gate. And you know the technical part of it, how the water is, uh, water level is risen to allow the boat to go up and then it is receded to allow the boat to come to the farther downstream. After the Faraka barrage, then you are into the green flat plains of the Bengal. The river becomes narrow now and therefore more intimate and very close to you. Now here you can see one of the largest Hindu temples besides the natural life 
and the exotic colonial buildings. Murshidabad, Hazad Dori Palace. It's a fabulous museum of the Nawab era. And it tells you the story of the British Raj. These are the, some monuments of Murshidabad, it's the old capital of Bengal, and the witness of the decadence of the Mughals under Aurangzeb, and then after the fall of Aurangzeb, how the Mughal empire scattered and formed slowly into what we call the British Raj. Besides being a capital, Mushidabad was also known for its religious activities and it has developed its own style of temple architecture. You see on the left is a giant temple in a private house in Mushidabad, whereas on the right is a Shiva temple built in a very distinctive Mushidabad style of temple architecture. In this town, you can see all different style of temple architectures, but this one is unique. Inside of a palace in Murshidabad, you can enjoy the life of the great opulence under the British, the Bengal merchants, soon joined by the merchants from every other part of India. And slowly, the economic capital of India started shifting towards Calcutta and Calcutta emerging as the capital of India. This is going to be the largest uh, Hindu temple in India, as it is near completion now. The temple of Vedic Planetarium planned in Mayapur. This is the old estuary of the river. And it is very well explained if you are uh, on the river bed, you will see the distributaries mostly now dried up in a short distance. But this was the beginning of the Ganga's estuarine journey all the place that we will be visiting after this has formed after this historical incident of Ganga's splitting into two heads, probably about 100,000 years ago. A relaxed afternoon on the sun deck, or the library inside the boats, or you can have a little bit of spa therapy inside the boat, or you enjoy the cacophony of the streets, get into a tuk-tuk -tuk ride and visit the nearby villages. The choice is yours. Experience the countryside, meet the people and get yourself what is known as the soul of India. We are in the town of Kalna now, you can see the very typical terracotta temples of Bengal, slowly moving from stone to, temp to terracotta. Look at this. this, is a unique temple of made of 108 Shiva temples formed into two concentric circles and far, that is the top of your screen, you can see the river Ganga flowing. So this is a panoramic view, uh, an aerial view of the temple site, which you can visit in the temple town of Kalna. And you can see more details. Also, you can witness the local artisanal works such as smelting metals and forming into brass utensils. Or you just relax again on the sun deck. This is one of the boats that travel on this uh, boat regularly and the one which goes all the way up to Chunar. A view from the Imamara in the Hooghly district. Now the river Ganga here is often called Hooghly and people often get confused why it is called Hooghly and not Ganga. So it is called Ganga, the Bhagirathi and the Hooghly. Hooghly is probably a misnomer. And as you know, the word Hooghly in the ancient Bengali actually means the reclaimed river. And so it cannot be the name of the river itself. It is probably the name popularized by the colonial people. The Portuguese were the first to invade in this part. 
and followed by the Dutch, the Danish, the French, the Belge, the Swedish, and finally the English. So all these European companies in search of the treasure of India, we are in the search of soul of India, but in the early 18th century, it was the search of the treasure of India. They used these rivers to carry out of the country textile, spices, condiments, and the natural dyes and salt beta. Bengal, undivided Bengal, which means today's Bengal, Bihar, Orissa, Bangladesh, and Assam together, they contributed over 60% of the world trade in textile during this period of time. And you can see the remnants of those era, which is the colonial part of the river cruise. You can see this Eglise de Sacre Coeur, which is the French church in the middle of the city of Chandanagar on the bank of the river. You can also enjoy a cooking classes. Sometimes they have tea tasting classes and other uh, interesting indoor activities or wait for your dining at, at a great dining place and library inside the boats. Some boats are bigger, some are smaller, but each one has most of the time the same facilities. People go out often to mingle with the local crowd and get to know their life. And the soul music called Baul is another introduction to the people traveling for the first time in this part of the world. Baul music is not just a music, it is a life itself. And another time, another day, we can talk about it in details. You can see people enjoying the daily life, mixing with the people, learning about textile, or taking part in the festivities. The biggest festival of the estuary delta of Ganga is the Durga Puja. It's a celebration of motherhood, and Ganga is considered as the mother, so is Durga. So you can see all the women celebrating that great womanhood in the estuary of the river. <clears throat> and river is an integral part of it. So on the top left corner, you can see at the end of the Durga Puja, the, uh, the statue of the goddess immersed into the river for its final journey. Because we believe that the statue is an embodiment of the God, they invoke the spirit of the God into it and then it becomes God itself. And then the Visarjan takes place. We allow, we pray to our mother to come back again and leave this mortal body. This is the takeaway from the tour. At the end of the day, you see this million dollar smile from an unknown child who's otherwise not leave the mother's arm, get into your arms and becomes one with you. With this, you'll be drifted a little bit away from the crowd. And now you know the natural bounty of the Ganga Brahmaputra basins. And you see you are itself in the largest estuarine forest in the world, the Sundarban mangroves. Sundarban mangrove spreads between India and Bangladesh over about 10,000 square kilometer of landmass split into many hundreds of uh, islands accommodating different kind of animal species such as tiger, snake, jungle cat, crocodiles, and many different species of birds. So both India and Bangladesh side of Sundarbans has been declared as a world heritage site by UNESCO. So going through this UNESCO World Heritage, you enter into Bangladesh and you see some more interesting places like the 60 Gambuj 
mosque at Sonargaon. The life continues. Some crisscross river channels, which either come out from the Ganga or coming out of the Padma, makes the life in Bangladesh a very slow but engrossing. Here also you have seen, you can see some beautiful palaces of the old Sadar Gao, literally meaning the, the village of the gold. Oxford Epiphany Church, or the floating market in Bangladesh. You can see that in the right bottom in Borishal. Or you can see the legendary muslin weaving, Jamdani weaving in Bangladesh, in the, or the work of pottery. see more monuments in the days to come. Sometimes you feel like it's a temple, but when you go in, it is a mosque. Or the other time, you feel like it's a mosque, but when you enter, you see it's a temple. So the mosque, the temple, the church, it's all its outward things. Inside, it's all the same journey of the life. Continues as we go through the narrow, deep channels of Bangladesh, walking past or cycling past the villages, meet the holy men, the fishermen, and the tea women and the businessmen, all together or in separate places. We enter into one of the major pilgrimage of the Northeastern India, the Kamakya Temple, a Shakti Peter, it's a fabulous temple and a very powerful Shiva uh, Shakti temple. It's called Kamakya on the Nilachal Hills. Then we go further into the Brahmaputra now. We're already in the Brahmaputra and here you see one of the largest river and island called the Majuli Island. In the Majuli Island, you will see the beautiful Satras, the Vaishtava Satras, the embodiment of love of Radha and Krishna displayed in the various dance form of the Satriya dance, which is now uh, regarded as a classical dance form. Then you are in one of the uh, finest wildlife sanctuaries in India, the Kaziranga National Park, which is also a violated site and the only place for one horn Indian rhinos. So when you are here, you see the silk making village in Swalkuchi, and also you can see the dances of the women folk in Assam in this very in typical dress called the Mekla and Chadar made from the Tasar or Muga silk in Assam. So our journey in the river will end here with the cruise boat, but the river continues go, to go farther upstream. And there you can see many more things. However, you cannot go on a boat. So you have to do a little bit adventure. So your journey started with an adventure and your journey will finish with another adventure at the end. So you started from the Gangotri glaciers of the great Himalayas and you will continue your journey from Ganga to Meghna, Padma, Jamuna, Brahmaputra, and in that Silghat officially, but you can continue a mind journey upstream towards Parashuram Kunda, where the famous Saint Parashuram got his salvation in Upper Assam, and then go upward trek to the Mansarovar one day. So that's all for the time. Thank you very much for watching. Shubhankar, absolutely brilliant presentation. We had the kind of uh, journey you've taken. I think uh, in the middle of April, there are some holidays coming and I am coming there.
So I'll be there. Thank you very much, ma'am. Absolutely lovely to have you. Beautiful presentation. And so, uh, so many comments are obviously coming in on the, not just what you've shown, but the way you have shown. I think it's absolutely brilliant presentation style also. And a lot of hard work in putting the pictures together. And of course, Moduli, we have all heard, but not seen yet. So I think it's an absolutely uh, good time to visit now that the number of vaccinations have made sure that we are all in a re reasonably safe environment. But uh, in terms of the weather, in terms of the stay options, when would you suggest uh, what are the best times and how does one organize the stay, etc. part of it? The best time would be between October and February. Because this time the river, especially in the uh, lower end of the river, is less disturbed because uh, the rivers are calm and quiet. It can be done any time of the year, but this is the best time to do it between October and February. Okay. And how are the stay options? Uh, you know, how does one... There are uh, six different companies. They have their cruise boats now. And uh, the companies, they have the boat which has uh, twin sharing rooms. In fact, in some of the rooms I have shown inside already, but one can easily check with the companies. Uh, and uh, they have uh, air conditioned rooms and dining, in inboard dining, so uh, and a library inside. So all the facilities inside the boat itself. Only at places where they have long excursions, such as Varanasi, Patna, Kolkata, Dhaka, and Guwahati. These are the places when you can uh, transit in the, from one uh, part of the tour to the other part. You can they use sometimes the local hotels, which are mostly the uh, five-star hotels or uh, similar category hotels, and, and then explore by land route to these areas. But in between these two uh, turnaround points, you have no option other than staying on board and that makes your journey through. The other thing is that the boats do not run during the night, so you do not miss anything. In the night, it is anchored in the midstream, and so you can enjoy a good sleep. Even if you are in the middle of a city, the, the sound, the pollution does not reach you, and so you are very relaxed. Yes, absolutely. In fact, I had the good fortune of being in Antara at uh, Calcutta. It was docked at that time, but they just sailed out a little bit to give us the experience. And I can and I stayed a night in that uh, boat. And I can tell all the viewers who are listening here that what Shubhanka just said about the quietude, it is so amazing to wake up to and to sleep to silence, which is something we miss in our lives these days, that just the sound of water or just the sound of the wind. We are unable to even appreciate that sound because there are so many other sounds around us all the time. And in India, of course, river cruises are coming of age. And that's why we wanted to bring to all of you this session about Incredible India, that how incredible India truly is. And who thought some years back that you'll have such amazing options of river cruises. So it's a very interesting and a very new area in which India is coming up really fast because the Inland Waterways Authority is making sure that the rivers are made good for cruises the dredging operations and everything has started happening at a very rapid pace. So all that is adding and we are a land of rivers. I mean, if we look back, if we look back to our civilization, we've had such, such robust and such vivacious, one can say, you know, civilizations along the Ganga, the Yamuna, the Narmada and on down south, all our civilizations in fact have been along the rivers. And so rivers have a very interesting as you go along the kind of history you witness. And Ajay, you are sitting in Banaras and what better a place to appreciate the very fact of how much the river has given life to humanity, to our civilizations have been so much based around rivers. So I think today's session is very special for all of us in India because we, we worship the rivers as our mother. And Brahmaputra, of course, uh, is different, the gender changes there. 
And that is also a very interesting uh, part of the storytelling on why that happens. So Ishwanga, any other tips you want to give to, to travelers who want to come in river cruises in terms of how to be responsible when you're on board in a, a ship, a boat, where, what should you not be throwing? You know, these are small things, but these are very important reminders because our rivers need to be worshipped on one hand, we say. On the other hand, we are throwing plastic or paper or just smoking a cigarette and throwing the butt. I think we need to talk just a little bit on that, Shivangar. This is actually true that uh, uh, most of the people who should come to this cruise must uh, remember that we wash the river as mother. And so people take, a, take mothers for granted, you know. Uh, we should not do that. We should uh, also uh, understand that the mothers also have a capacity. And so we must respect our mother and the river is the lifeline. So we should not allow the plastics to throw on the river. And we also have to uh, make sure that I think most of the cruise ship that are operating, the responsible companies are working on it and uh, they have uh, used a uh, special, uh, you know, um, cautions to their passengers before boarding well in advance so that people are know people know what to do one thing one has to remember that in the banks of the river there are hardly any proper jetty in most of the places and therefore the most of the boat carry a small tender boat which is a rowing a boat or uh, a mechanized boat and to board into the small boat and deboard is uh, it needs some care so the people should have a proper uh, shoe before boarding the ship and also maintain it all the time. And about the hygiene and all, now everybody is very well trained. And from the beginning, it was not so much. So we used to carry all the time the sanitizers along with us so that the people, whenever they meet somebody, they have to uh, uh, wash their hand with the sanitizers. But now it has become a part of our life, so everybody will know it. The second thing is, especially when we talk about this river cruise, you're actually going into very remote areas, very, very uh, remote, unknown, unexposed to the even the Indian tourists, though they also think sometimes that we are foreigners. And so we must be respectful for the villagers and their attitude and their customs and do not want to impose on our belief system on the villages. It is very important because they have kept this tradition, they have kept this culture for years. They know much better than us. We have been taught in the schools and colleges and many things, but we must learn and not try to teach them. This is one uh, thing I would suggest all my uh, guests on board to realize and accept things as it is. Like you see in the most prominent tourist places, whenever a tourist goes, no matter from which country he comes, there are touts and uh, uh, beggars and uh, vendors running towards them. In this journey, you will not see in a single place where this happens, despite of traveling through some of the poorest parts poor people in their dignity will come to you and you will be surprised to see that you consider them or we consider them poor. They may be poor in terms of economy, but they are very rich in terms of their mind, in terms of their humanity. And this is what sometimes we say that poverty is not <clears throat> about what you do not have. Poverty is about what you have. If you have uh, this pride and prejudice, you are poor. If you do not have them, you are rich. So this is the takeaway from the villages. So, so, so Vankarda, so Vankarda, what we have seen, this was not only the journey uh, through the two holy rivers, but also we have seen the wildlife, adventure, cultural tourism, the same time, the rural tourism, 
everything was yes. included in this webinar. Thanks to share the beautiful photographs, what we have seen. It's a really amazing. And uh, one thing, I have been in Maj Majuli uh, Island, and that is really amazing. If you uh, go there, you can see the silence, you can feel the nature. And uh, uh, when I was there, I was not, uh, you know, the in this uh, cruise. Uh, I went to Guwahati. From Guwahati, I went to Kajiranga. Tonight, I spent at Kajiranga. Then from Kajiranga, uh, we um, went to this Majuli Island first part drive and then second part the uh, river you know the cruise and we went to the majuli island and there was a basic accommodation and that is i think uh, by the uh, state government uh, they have guest house we stayed there for two nights and what you feel there when you go to the majuli island you feel the real essence of india so one should travel once in their lifetime to majuli island Absolutely, Ajay ji. And you also know that <clears throat> there is another interesting thing on the Brahmaputra cruise. Uh, Assam Bengal Navigation Company started, introduced this particular walk, which is one of the favorite walks for me, is uh, a butterfly walk. Have you ever heard of a tour on a butterfly walk? A tour where you just see the butterflies. And there are specialists, the naturalists on board, who will take you, tell you about the different kind of butterflies. So that's another take. It's an eye opener and it's uh, pleasing like anything. How beautiful. Just the thought itself is so beautiful. So yes. one can imagine how, you know, really it will be, you know, and I'm reading, of course, the comments as we go along. And uh, when I say that you discover the silence, so Atulji has mentioned about Donna Paula. Absolutely agree with all my viewers who are talking about, uh, India being so beautiful in other places too, absolutely. And when Ajay tells you that when you go to Mojoli and see the essence of India, not to miss, actually that is the problem with all of us in India. Wherever we go, at least I can say that for myself and I'm sure it is true for so many of you also. Wherever you go, you feel, at least I go through that feeling. I can just stay here. I think it, that is the beauty of incredible yeah. India. I think and yes. It is just, uh, there is something, and uh, Shumakar very well said, on the whole issue that when you go somewhere, you are going there to absorb the local flavors, the way they live, the philosophy, the food, the culture, the dance, the art, everything. Let us not carry prejudices and carry thrust our things when we go, because then you are not learning. The idea of travel is to open your mind and to absorb and appreciate other people's cultures, their ways of living. And that is so, so very critical, especially when you go into a country like India, which is so diverse. You move out of your home and just go out, the way food is made even in the next door home is different because the amalgamation of different cultures in India is absolutely the most beautiful thing about incredible India is the diversity, the people, the, the sheer variety of things that we have in our country. And if you go to Odisha, you get the same feeling that you must go there because where else will you see the Ogilvy Ridley turtle? You go to Kashmir, it is a different paradise. You go to Goa, somebody just mentioned, Atul mentioned about Donna Paula. Goa is entirely different. Kerala, the backwater is entirely different. The temples in Tamil Nadu, the kind of architecture, totally different. You go to Punjab, the zest, the spirit of the rural belt entirely different. So I can go on and on about incredible India, but I also say to a lot of uh, you who are listening, also do go and visit something like the Kargil War Memorial. The feeling you get there is entirely different. I say this to all of you that must go at some point in time. In Delhi, when you are there, go to the National War Memorial. It's a very different feeling. So I think in India, you are spoiled for choice. So much to see so much to appreciate and so much food to enjoy. So keep walking, keep eating the street food. You will not get this kind of street food anywhere in the world. So the story that we are trying to tell you viewers after what, 120 plus webinars that have happened and this journey with our registered guides is of incredible India and incredible Indians who make this country so incredible. 
and this journey is not going to stop some of you have been asking us on the side when can i revisit this session can i see the one that i missed yes of course they are sitting as repositories permanent repositories for all times to come on the ministry of tourism's website under dekho apna desh very soon with the help of negd they are helping us to make a dedicated portal on dekho apna desh where you will have all the recordings we with the help of the our registered tour guides and specialists will also be working on subtitling them in other languages foreign languages also so that more and more people can take benefit of these absolutely brilliant sessions the session done today by shubhankar absolutely five star plus absolutely thank you very much full session and so we look forward to keep connecting with all of you people like you who will you know spend your life in in this industry in this trade and in that process you, the amount of love you are creating the amount of uh, you know uh, value i would say that you are creating for all of us even in india as an indian i cannot claim that i have seen everything i don't even know the existence of a lot of things of my own country so i think all of you are doing fantastic work by joining hands with us on the kopna desh and creating what actually india is and i want to thank dr ajay singh also especially because this is all his initiative this is all his thought that let's every week and why some of you don't see me anymore because i have somebody so responsible in ajay that i can take it easy sometimes and do other things so i personally want to thank ajay for taking this responsibility so beautifully forward ma'am it was your vision and uh, what uh, we all found that uh, you know this is very informative and it is helpful to the traveler to the uh, tourism worker to the travel agent to everybody so the uh, here we are always you know the with our best speakers every saturday 11 am and just we need your blessing nothing else always there so viewers we are at 12 and therefore also at the end of the session so in once again a very formal thanks to shubhankar who's brought in a beautiful session thank you shubhankar thank you ajay thank you to my team members motoshi everybody in the back room who works to make sure that the sessions keep coming and of course a huge big thanks to any gd because without them we wouldn't have been able to leverage for almost 2 years on 14th april we will be completing 2 years of sessions and it's been a fantastic journey so as i always say to everyone dekhiye aur dikhaiye apna sundar atulya bharat and next saturday 11 am we'll be back but i'm not telling you where we are going we're going to keep that as a little secret for next 7 days so see you viewers next saturday 11 am namaste namaskar everyone namaskar